Hello, and welcome to Collisions Pre-Lab. So in our last lab, uh, the Explosions Lab, <laughs> we found that in any explosion, the final momentum of the carts were equal and opposite all the time. It right? didn't matter what mass we used, didn't matter what uh, the strength of the collision or the explosion was, sorry, how far in you pushed the plunger. The momentums were always equal and opposite. But when we looked at it a little bit differently in the post lab where we said, the momentum before the explosion was zero, because neither cart was moving. And since they're equal and opposite, the momentum after the explosion was also zero. They add up to zero. So our question now in this lab is, is that true of collisions in general? Or is it only true of explosions? So we want to compare in this lab the momentum of the two-cart system before the collision and the momentum of the two-cart system after the collision. And these are vector things here, so we're going to have to deal with directions. This one's going to be a little trickier. Okay. So the purpose of this lab, to create graphical and mathematical representations of the relationship between the momentum of the system before the collision, that's the two carts, and the momentum of the system after the collision, okay. so the two carts afterwards. So basically what you're going to have here is the same setup we used before, two motion detectors. Each motion detector will map the velocity as a function of time for one of the carts. And then you're going to push the carts into one another. And you can change lots of things about these. You can use the magnet ends, you can use the Velcro ends. You can push them fast, you can push them slow. You can change the masses of the different carts. One could be moving, one could not be moving. You can do all sorts of different combinations here. And so you're going to try to do 10 different combinations of things. And then we're going to check, and then we'll graph final momentum to initial momentum, and we'll see what the relationship is. Right? Is there something nice that we can predict? Now, we are going to try two different kinds of collisions here. These are collisions that we talked about earlier in this unit. The first one is an elastic collision, or at least as close as we can actually make it in the lab. This is a collision during which kinetic energy is conserved, and that means stays the same. In other words here, no dissipated energy. So we're not going to worry about any thermal energy being created or any uh, deformation of the objects or anything. And the way we're going to do that is using the magnet ends. So if you turn the carts the right way, all right, there are matching magnet ends, and the carts won't actually touch. Right? They'll just bounce off of one another. That'll be about as close as we can get to an elastic collision. Okay. Now, this is the, uh, what you're going to use here to look at this information. Like the last lab, you're going to figure out velocities and then calculate momentums. So this is a collision I did that was much like the one in the diagram, except in this case, one of the carts had twice the mass of the other cart. But you'll notice here, one cart was going in the positive direction, one cart was going in the negative direction. Then they collided. The cart in the negative direction started going back in the positive. The one in the positive started going in the negative. So what were those velocities? Well, you'll notice up here the red is lit up. So I can grab this and move it around. I can pick a point. So here is the velocity, 0 0.30, just before the collision for the red cart. Go down here negative 0.24 is the velocity after the collision for the red cart, or the final red cart velocity. So initial red cart velocity, final red cart velocity. Click on the blue thing up here, and you can drag this one around. There's the initial velocity of the blue cart, about negative 0.13. There's the final velocity of the blue cart, about positive 0.15. Notice, don't use these numbers. Those are the times. You've got to use the ones out in front. So you're going to have to do a little bit of moving around here, all right? Initial, final. Click. Here's the red one. Initial, final. Your graphs should look pretty smooth like this. If you, they aren't, you need to change the angle. It should be about half a click back on your motion detector. Or call me over and I can help you make uh, good numbers. You've got to be careful, though. Include the positives and the negatives. These are vector equations. So if you're not doing an elastic collision, Instead, you're going to do an inelastic collision, an energy where kinetic energy is not conserved. There is dissipated energy, usually stored as thermal energy and some sound. In this case, you're going to use the Velcro ends. Okay? Now, we could just smash the carts into one another, but I don't want to hurt the very expensive carts. So you're going to use the Velcro ends. So what will happen is the carts will run into one another and stick together. They'll become one big object, if you will, afterwards. Now, you don't have to do it this way where one of the carts is moving and the other one is stationary. You can have them both moving and stick together. Right? You can have one more massive than the other. 
Okay? But one way or the other, they're going to stick together afterwards. That means, by the way, their final velocities will be exactly the same, right? So after the, uh, after the collision, the lines should overlap if it, everything works out well. So again, you're going to try 10 different collisions, vary the mass, vary the velocities, uh, whether they're moving or not moving to start out with, vary the uh, type of collision, inelastic or elastic collisions. Do a whole bunch of them and try to vary things so that you get a nice range of numbers, so that they're not all going to be a bunch of points that are going to cluster. That way you're going to be able to see a better range and a better pattern all right, in your stuff. So do some slow ones, do some fast ones, do some less massive ones, do some more massive ones. All right, um, do some with movement, starting out some without, some elastic, some inelastic. So really try to vary some things up here. And it should work pretty well because you don't have to actually touch the carts after you let them go. Just get your hands out of the way and let them do their thing. At the end, you are going to graph, uh, as it'll say on the lab sheet, um, and then you'll look at the slope right, and put the slope into the website, and uh, hopefully it'll accept it because you've done the lab well. So there you go, a lab on collisions. How does the final system momentum compare to the initial system momentum?